Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll show you how you can build asynchronous APIs for your LLM application with Kafka and Redis. Both the notes and the code will be linked in the description if you want to check them out. So let's start with the system design diagram and we're going to focus on the first part and then move on to the remaining. So in the first part, we have a route slash answer. The user sends us their prompt and immediately we send back HTTP 202 accepted, which is a way for the backend to tell the client that we're going to process the response asynchronously. So why asynchronously in this case? So we're going to assume everything coming to us through this route are workflows that can take a long time, let's say up to a minute or a couple of minutes. So instead of blocking the request until the response is ready, we're going to build a mechanism where we do the processing in the background and the client can keep pulling our backend for a response. Okay. So the moment we send the HTTP 202, let's see how the response looks like for that. Okay. So if I scroll down, uh, we're going to have something like this, where when we respond back to the, uh, when we respond back to the client, we give them this polling URL, okay? And what this does is it gives the client a way to check the progress of the task. So in the polling uh, or using the polling URL, they can do something like this where every couple of minutes, they can uh, call that API with some kind, of an, uh, some kind of an ID that we give them. And uh, when the response is ready, that polling URL is going to give them something like this, maybe with the status, the original ID, the prompt, and the response. Or maybe it's taking us way longer. In that case, in the response, we can still include the conversation ID and the prompt, but we won't include a response, and the status is going to be set to pending. Okay? So going back to the diagram, when, when we build a system in that way, we're almost putting the responsibility on the client to get the response when it's ready. So we're not blocking the original API call. Instead, we're giving them the URL so that when the response is ready, they can fetch it rather than us needing to push the data to the client. Now, let's talk about what happens uh, in the Kafka layer once we have sent that response to the, to the user, okay? So the first thing the backend server does is it publishes a message to a Kafka topic called async user prompt. Uh, and if we quickly take a look at the schema, it's going to be super simple. It only takes in a conversation ID that maybe the backend assigns to a prompt and it has to prompt itself. Now, once the message goes to Kafka, we of course have a Kafka consumer that is, uh, that is configured to process any new message coming to this topic. So the moment it gets the message, it already knows the conversation ID and the prompt. It forwards the prompt to OpenAI, waits for a response, and then once ready, it stores both the conversation ID and the response to Redis. At this point, in the background, in Redis, you have the response to the original prompt and you also publish the same data back to Kafka, not to the same topic, but a new topic in this case called async LLM response. So if I scroll down, uh, this is sort of the, the schema that you can go for for that second topic. Again, it has the conversation ID and the prompt, but this time it has the response as well. Now, uh, we have the response in Redis and we have it in Kafka. So the moment we have it in Redis, of course, that's a very easy way for the client to get that response back through that polling URL. So if we go to the polling URL again, this is how it looked like, remember? So whenever the client is hitting this polling route, we can just check Redis for this conversation ID to figure out if the response is there or not. If it is there, we send it back. If it is not there, we just say that it's still pending, okay? But now, why do we need to write it back to Kafka? Uh, the cool thing about writing the response back to Kafka is now you have 
uh, almost decoupled any other use case that want to do further processing on that response. Okay, so if we zoom in to that part of the design, um, so it's the consumer getting the response from OpenAI, storing it on Redis, and then publishing it back to Kafka uh, to a new topic. Now, there might be many different systems that rely or that wants to do processing on that response we just received. So of course, one way they can do that is by continuously querying our database. But instead, a much more real-time and efficient way to do it is to tell every other system at your company that, hey, whenever I have a response from an LLM, it's going to end up in this Kafka topic called async LLM response with a fixed schema. So we can tell it that uh, this is how our schema is going to look like. And every interested party can just pull that uh, topic for any new messages. So the moment we get the message, one of these inter uh, interested parties can pull that message from Kafka and do their own processing, which can be many things. It can be uh, maybe it needs to update some different database um, or it has to do some kind of uh, some kind of a post processing or maybe for the response, right? Like in this case, your response was pizza. So maybe every time we have a response from the LLM, we also want to create uh, some kind of AI generated photo uh, of the response. So things like that, we can easily decouple from the original uh, answer fetching um, and Kafka lets you do that. Another example would be maybe we want to check for profanity or other quality control in the response. So all those can happen asynchronously. Um, okay, so if I go back to the diagram here, just as a quick recap, we, uh, we have a route for the browser to send us the uh, prompt we immediately reply with the HTTP 202 and we give it a polling URL. Using the polling URL, it can continuously check if the response is ready. When the response is ready, we send them something like this. And when the response is not ready, we give them back something that says pending. In the background, the moment we get the prompt, we write the prompt to a Kafka topic. We have a consumer that's consistently listening to the Kafka topic. The moment there's a new prompt, it forwards the prompt to OpenAI to get a response. Once it has the response, it stores both the prompt, the response, and a conversation ID uh, in Redis. While it stores it in Redis, it also sends another message downstream to a different Kafka topic with the prompt and response. And now any post-processing you want to do on the prompt can be done through this Kafka system downstream where different parties that want to process the data more are listening for new messages on this uh, LLM response topic. Uh, and the final piece is whenever in that polling URL, uh, the client wants to know if an answer is ready or not, uh, the backend server can just look at this Redis database to try to figure out if it's ready or not. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Again, I'll have both the code and the notes linked in the description below. So just check them out if you need more details. And uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And I will catch you folks in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.